Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your husband's conscious effort so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm sharing insights from the husband of a ridiculously happy wife. This is part three of our man panel series, and my guest, Dr. Ben is not a student or a book reader, but rather the husband of a student and the father of two coaches. He agreed to be part of our man panel series. And today I'm going to get his perspective on the changes in his family as a result of his wife and two daughters having the connection framework and the six intimacy skills. He's also going to answer anonymous questions from students on the husband's perspective. The Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award is on hiatus during our special man panel series, and then it'll be back. My guest, Dr. Ben, has been married for decades. He's going to describe the challenges they faced at his house and what's different there now. He shares how he responded to his wife's changes and what he appreciates about her the most now. Dr. Ben was so honest and wise and willing to share deeply and personally about his many years of marriage. And once again, I learned a lot. Now, imagine being his wife who invited him on the show on my behalf to be a guest and talk openly about their marriage on a podcast that's been downloaded over a million times. Can you imagine the courage that must take? So, I want to give a big shout out to Dr. Ben's wife for the gift of her husband sharing with us on this podcast. I am so grateful. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest, Dr. Ben, is not a student or a book reader, really, but rather the husband of a student and the father of two more students on our campus. He agreed to be part of our man panel series. And today I'm going to get his perspective on the changes in his family as a result of his wife and daughters having the connection framework and the six intimacy skills. He's also going to answer anonymous questions from some students on the husband's perspective. Welcome, Dr. Ben. It is such a privilege and an honor to have you on the Empowered Wife podcast. The honor is mine. Thank you. All right. Well, let's start by asking some getting to know you questions. Can you just share like how long you've been married and and uh, how many children you have? I've been married for, thank God, uh, 40 years and thank God, eight children. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. That is quite an accomplishment. And uh, was survival's it? accomplishment. <laughs> Doing it was easy. Surviving is all. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So tell us a, a little bit about uh, any challenges that you were having in your marriage um, previously, if you would. Well, um, there's two parts to it. The first thing people say, what's wrong with the marriage? is always other person's fault. Always her fault or his fault, right? Yeah. And the reality was it's true. It was her fault. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, we we you know, we both have a lot of growing to do, a lot of a lot of work to do, um, and but there was a, a, a tension, almost like walking with eggshells, um, that to do because I couldn't predict what's going to happen. It was misinterpreted. I was um, very often it was resulting in unnecessary discord, um, just because of misinterpretation. I wanted to do what it meant, how to be. So we we struggled. We worked very hard throughout the years. We went through a lot of program, a lot of work through the years. And everything, everything would help. Everything helped a little bit, a little bit. But there was some underlying misunderstanding, underlying conflict, misunderstanding that that seemed to be pervasive and almost almost impossible to get beyond. It was always a, a struggle to stay there. Um, and you know, unfortunately, we all stumbled, but she would just retreat and just shut down for days, weeks, a month at a time. 
Trump's calculated how much time he spent shutting down. It was like, you know, like 10 years. I mean, it has a huge amount of time just being shut down. But because of a misunderstanding, misinterpreting. And of course, you know, I don't respond always perfectly. And so it becomes a bit of a, of a, of a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've never heard anyone doing the calculations on how long they were shut down for. But it, uh, when you put it in that perspective, right, 40 years and then 10 of it was um, really unnecessary discord, as you're describing it, really is uh, kind of heartbreaking to, uh, to live yeah. through that. So, yeah, I get that. And um, when it was good, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And when it wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And so... And that's that's suffering that's in the part where it wasn't. I I know it was at my house at least. There was uh, quite a bit of, as you say, unnecessary suffering um, from those misunderstandings. So um, when did you first hear about the books and programs uh, on our campus? Or I don't know how much you've heard about that, actually. I'm oh, guessing oh, I've been hearing about it for a while. Talk about it a little bit. You know, I remember years ago, seeing something like this surrounded wife, whatever it was, and hearing something about it. And, and people having mixed ideas, and I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, but Jeff has always had an interest in, in personal growth. And I got to give a lot of credit. She's always, always looking to grow. Um, that's a real blessing for me. A little challenging at times because I stopped kicking and screaming into a lot of program. But it's usually, it usually right. Usually it was, it was to my benefit. And uh, but she kept looking and looking and looking. And then my, our daughter, Sarah got into it. And uh, Rebecca said, hey, this is pretty good. And then myself, I didn't read too much about it. I was kind of the beneficiary of it. <laughs> gotcha. So Sarah Gitta is the one that, where that's where you first became aware of it. Uh, but then eventually your wife enrolled to be a coach trainee. And Sarah Gitta had already trained and become a coach. And that wasn't even the end of it. We'll get to that. But um, so, so you're married to... Your wife went through relationship coach training. How did that impact you? Well, it was a little bit challenging at first um, because sometimes you got to follow a script. It seems a bit insincere, like mm-hmm. forced. But that's okay. It's just training. We've all been through training. Um, when you go with any kind of training, whether it's martial arts or wrestling or speaking, people, you got to practice the script to probably get it to come to come your thing. And so it became, um, but it came very um, a lot of relief. I could say something, and was only being misinterpreted as you know I'm attacking you or doing some horrible. She was oh, and we could laugh, and we started laughing a lot more, which was one of the really cool things. We we laugh a lot more. We always had a good time, but it was uncertain when to be working. When we were actually get my joke, when get my joke, you know, um, and so. But after we had done the training, and since that time, it's much lighter, it's much easier, it's much, yeah, much more, much smoother. Um, and then the training, um, it was intense. She really, really applied, really applied herself to it, she watching did. all the videos and the, this thing and then that thing working. And she, she really got into it, which meant I was almost on the back burner sometimes, um, which is part of the transition. <laughs> Yeah, so fair. So you, you were maybe getting a little neglected uh, during the training. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I was fine with it. I, I, you know, I've been through. I understand what training is like, and it was fine. But it, it was interesting to watch. You really got into it. I think if you're going to make a, a make a a paradigm shift, you're going to really tr- um, morph into something bigger and better than you were before. You have to be prepared to both do and how are others doing, that big shift it takes a lot of work, a lot of work to change how we look at things. Our minds have this way of looking at our paradigm, how we see things. And uh, if you're not dedicated to it, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You can have the road scripting into the right things. You get a little better, but you don't really get it to really put yourself into it. Yeah. yeah, but your wife brought a lot of focus to it. And so there was a pretty dramatic change at your house, it sounds like. Yeah, tremendous, dramatic change, dramatic change. And how did you change as a result of her changing? Or did um, you? No, I did change. I, I became a lot freer, a lot more comfortable, a lot more open, um, creative. I, my creative energies were a little more accessible. I felt more open in those things. Um, I think the happiness is, is easier being home, being around. It was a... Um, 
the frustration levels dropped dramatically, dramatically. Because before we said something and it resulted in, you know, a blow up or a shutdown. And now it's just, oh, that's what you're saying? Yeah, we laugh. And we, it's, it's just, just fine. It's just smooth. It's much smoother, much more accepting. I think also she saw it wasn't so bad after all, you know. <laughs> I wasn't, I'm not. Uh, I'm really a worthwhile guy to have around. So, uh, <laughs> so you felt uh, more accepted. It sounds like, and yeah, a lot yeah. more, re- a lot more relaxed. It, there was less uh, stress for you. It sounds like uh, much, much less stress. Okay, and and nobody's at their best really when there's uh, when they're under a lot of stress. Huh. So, I know. Did you feel like you were able to be your best self more? Is that fair to describe it that way? My boy's been kind of terrific, actually. But, you know. <laughs> well, it sounds like it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you there. So, and, um, no, and it is true. It is, and actually, that could be a lot more. Um, it's I don't know, much more at peace. It, I, I can't explain the transition. It was kind of subtle, and it's been time now. So I've kind of accepted it's, it's the new normal. Yeah, kind of phrase. Yeah, and it, it's, it's a delightful new normal. Um, the many times I didn't want to come home. It's hard to come home because who I mean, and, and meet unfavorable things. And it became easier to be around, easier to be home, more pleasant. It was more, and I became um, a little more calm inside. But I can't think what else changed. It's been, it's been quite a bit over a year now, I mean, gradual transitions. Um, and it was, it was really a, such a delightful change. That I think was it really like that. I don't. I don't want to talk so much about the past because it can bring up stuff we've been through, worked it through. We're done. We're out of that world. We're in a whole new level of being. And every so often we'll really ask what school was like, and I say, you know, let's just kind of yeah. drop that because, you know. Um, and if you have questions, I'm happy to share because I know it's important for others to understand and encourage others to go through the program. But we, we actually avoid discussing things how they were because it's, it won't take any word pleasant, you know. Um, so you're saying she's using the skills she learned on our campus, the six intimacy skills and the connection framework and all that in this other program, and that's making that program more effective. Right. Because, yeah. you know, listen, if, you, if you're making this soup, and rather than putting in salt, you put in sugar. Right, change one, one element. Just one little thing. One scoop of this, one scoop of that. And the taste. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so if you change in your life, change one thing to the better in your life, what's going to the rest of your life? Holding us to change. Everything, everything changes, right? Everything changes. Um, and so it, it, a program changes everything. Everything, everything changes because you're just in a whole another level of, of, of being and appreciating. Yeah. I love that. Wow. And I, I can hear the wisdom in your perspective of let's not let's not talk about the past. Let's not focus on the the old hurts or the old struggle. And um, and yet I appreciate that you're also willing to do that today for the purposes of um, just really being a, a, a role model for what's possible, and also giving us the husband's perspective on these changes that have happened. So thank you for that. Now, I'll tell you something very to, to you guys out there, and even to you gals out there. You understand? Um, you have to drop it. The killer relationship is, is, is resent, resentment. Resentment and anger is the absolute killer of your life. And you hold on. Oh, oh, now you're like, where were you like? You can't. You can't go back. You got to say, okay, we made a change and accept it. It's very hard to accept that change. It's very hard. It's, it's not natural. Yeah. Because you want to say, you know. You did this, this, this. You want to get into that 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 nasty place and because of like you know yeah, but you think it'd be nice now. What about drop it, drop it, drop it? Because that won't help you anyway to hold on to it. Just makes you miserable and move on to the new world. It's it's very hard to do this. Very hard. I I dare say we all struggle with this. How to get past all the old nonsense. So tell me a little bit about how it was for you as a father to watch two of your daughters also have pretty incredible transformation, at least from my perspective, but I know you, you, you know them very well. So tell me about that. (laughs) One of the hardest parts of being a parent is 
letting go of the child and embracing an adult. I raised my kids to be thinkers, question, to be independent. And it was intentional. I did intentionally raise them to be that way, and communicating and to, to even argue and to disagree in a respectful fashion, but to disagree and move. But when they really do something as big as learning how to think, learning how to, to listen, learning how to move and how to change, it's, it's very, very, I'm very proud of them. Right? It's can't think of the better way of being proud of them, being impressed. I can talk to them. You can ask them for advice and insights. It's really cool. Talk to my kids as an adult, not father, child, but, you know, not quite peer. I'm still the parent, still the father, and they'll never change. Um, but there's a, a respect of what, what they're going through, doing the perspective. And um, I allow them to challenge me, and I challenge them. Um, which is it's it's marvelous, a marvelous experience, marvelous experience. Yeah. To see your children being adults with really good thinking patterns and adapting, you know, ideas and things you didn't give them. They just by giving them the tools to do that, I'm very proud of you. Absolutely. Did you see any particular changes in those two daughters? I think the biggest changes I saw was the ability to listen. Clearly listen. See, most people listen in order to argue and to rebut back. They're listening with one, you know, yeah, but I really get you. And the ability to really listen to ask questions, um, to, really, to listen to ask questions, um, and to um, express an opinion that is different from mine in a, in a respectful fashion, usually, not always. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, but uh, in respectful fashion, and, and it, it's um, it was just in a very mature fashion, and, and also not to be so sensitive. Um, Riff once heard uh, some of the speakers talking about, yeah, she's sensitive, sensitive like a, like a, like a keg of dynamite, just sensitive. How are my feelings? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an explosion. Right, uh, and so that also, I saw that leaving the explosion. Because I had a fear and not know what to do, and I had to handle things. That explosions were gone. The, the ability to have a, a consideration that perhaps there's no way of looking at things. Yeah, yeah, great. That's so great. Um, and what what was the the biggest benefit for you as a husband of having Rivka be a student of this work? Um. I would, I think this, the, uh, besides what I said already, being able to be, able to be honoring and respectful, she didn't have to be respectful to me. She, it, it was the amount of unnecessary comments and pejorative, pejorative statements and all that kind of stuff just disappeared, just disappeared. But um, what we really gained was a lot of humor, you know. We take walks. We love taking walks because of the forest and trail and make my walks and talking, and sharing. Someone said we'll start giggling about all kinds of stuff, you know, and then sharing, laughing about stuff. And we share. We don't never did that before. Not to never like this before. A little bit, not like this. So the humor, um, treating respectfully, and it, it's amazing. We taught and and it was in how women have no clue how to respect with a husband. Um, they don't realize how how disempowering it is. For guy to keep pounding him, pounding guy down, you know, we're so men are very fragile. We're very fragile. We're fighting the world, and in a man's world, it's win lose. I win when you lose. If I can beat you down, ah, good one. It's not. A, it's, it's rarely a, um, everyone has climbed together. So struggles and pressure is it. You come home and have more of that stuff at home. It's it's just, it's just crippling. It's more it's crippling. But come home and have come more of, of a loving, accepting, respecting respect. It's it's just a whole another world. I'm trying to think of a good example. I'm, um, I think everything is just you know. Even the hugs are different. Even the tolerances for differences. Ability to lack of being controlled, being condemned or criticized is just, just tremendous. Although she'll still sometimes say, um, 
you're making a left hand turn over here, you know. <laughs> I do forget sometimes, you know. <laughs> and you know that. perfect. Right, right. <laughs> right. And we have those times I said, Rifka, I'm calling I'm calling Laura, but I'm I'm calling her now. I'm calling her. <laughs> Why, Laura? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. How fun. I mean, and I really hear the playfulness. And it, it just sounds like such a huge accomplishment. Like after 40 years of marriage, 10 years of Cold War, right, collectively, that you guys would be walking um, in nature and just giggling together. Just sounds like uh, kind of a miracle, really. Kind of uh, like such a delight. I'll tell you a phrase. You can use this. Um, after she went through the program and she worked so hard on herself, I feel like I married the moment of my dreams. Wow. Wow. After 40 years. Yeah, finally. Well, it, yeah. I mean, I think that's something we would all wish for to have a 40 yeah. year marriage where you're married to the person of your dreams is, right. um, but it's also just an enormous accomplishment. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't come easy. It's I'm telling not. you, folks. <laughs> if you work it, it works. Work it, work it, you're worth it. Yeah, so does it feel like work now? No, no, it's natural. No, now it's natural. natural. Now it feels easy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is great. And how important is it to you, Dr. Ben, that your wife is happy? It is the most important thing in the world. When she's miserable... When she's miserable, I just met, if I try to make it happen and it doesn't work, oh my gosh. I once bought her a diamond bracelet. Didn't like it. Wouldn't even put it on. It was a really beautiful bracelet. I don't like a necklace. I couldn't make her happy. No matter what I did, no matter what I did, could not make her happy. It was terrible. So guess what happens after a while? What do you think I stopped doing? Stop buying diamond bracelets. That's, for that's sure. right. That's right. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I would stop doing, try to stop doing things. I, I could make her happy anyway. Why bother trying? Yeah. And then it, I wasn't trying to be hurtful, but I, if I keep failing at my best efforts to make someone happy, um, you, you guys are going to quit. I just quit. I think most guys are the same way. If you can't make her happy, she can't be happy. We think we have a job to make her wife happy. And as you well know, we can't make our, wife, our wife's happy, can we? <laughs> Not really. Not no. really. No. We, it's our job. It's my job to make That's myself right. happy. That's then my right. husband can pile on. He likes to pile on. <laughs> <laughs> you can add to it. Yeah, good. yeah, I can add to it. Yeah. But um, I just want to stop, pause on that for a moment because I just love your answer. It's the most important thing in the world is what you said. And I think that um, sometimes we... Uh, wives get the impression it's not important because our husbands have stopped trying because we haven't been pleasable. Um, and it's hard to see that dynamic when you're stuck in it. But uh, you did a great job of just describing how frustrating that was and why you, you gave up trying eventually. It just wasn't working. So. I even bought her own screwdriver set. She didn't appreciate anything. <laughs> no, you you told me your wife did not appreciate getting a screwdriver set. As it was a good. ratchet driver too. A good ratchet driver thing. It was, was a great. good ratchet driver. Okay, so it was high quality screwdriver set. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, every woman that's listening to this is like laughing, like, "No, I don't want a screwdriver set for my husband. Don't get me a screwdriver." It's just kind of it's funny. Anyway, so I love, I just love the contrast though between the, between the yin and the yang, right? Between, um, and you're pointing to many of these things, like the, the disapproval that um, men feel just in society about being men um, at all is, um, it's really heartbreaking and it is so it is, valuable. Not, not heartbreaking, it's crushing. It's crushing. Women it's make crushing. fun of men. They do. Fun of guys. They do. And it is crushing. And yeah. then they say, where's the men? Well, I just, just catch it. Where do you think where do you think they went? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess he's not strong enough to be a man or whatever. And then right. um, and that fragility is it's deceiving in a way, because you guys you look like big strong men to us. And sometimes we're not yeah, I know for me I wasn't as aware in the past of how crushing my man bashing was. Yeah. Uh, and so it's something we don't we don't allow on our campus. We don't we won't uh, we won't tolerate man bashing because it's just out of step with our our values in terms of ending world divorce and really being respectful of men. 
But so anyway, you're just really demonstrating why that's such an important value here on our campus. So, so what is your vision for your family now going forward? I'll tell you a story. We had last year, for the holidays, we all got together, except for one or two kids couldn't make it. Well, my in law, son in law couldn't make it. We had a retreat, the family retreat. And this is a lot of people, right? How many? A lot people? of people. A lot of people. Like, and that's all your grandchildren. I mean, how many how many people are we talking? Like 30 people? Or? Close to 40 people. Close to 40 people. Okay. Um, and kind of hard. It was the most delightful experience I had in my life. And it really, I think the ability to make it so joyful, because those things can be very stressful too, this thing and that thing. Can, but, 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 but I think, and I told everybody at the time, that think the most important, the biggest um, factor in making this the most delightful weekend probably of my life was Sarigita, having had coached my daughters and my wife on how to be how to be women, how to be how to be receiving, how to be happy, and all the guys and everyone got it. It really was that change. I really sincerely think that the biggest change I found is in this program. Now, I've been inside a program. We've done a lot of work. I told you before, a lot of things we've been through. But nothing has ever created a, a tangible, because you give tangible tools. I like what you do, Laura, is you give, do this, don't do that. Oh, my, my favorite one was, my favorite one was like, someone says, well, oh, what a lovely hat. Thank you. I lost last scene. It was great. But you give people tangible tools, and we had tools, and it was just an absolute absolute love fest on that weekend. It was it was marvelous. I and mean, we all of us, all the kids, all the grandkids, everyone was just was just to this day, a year and a half later, we can't we couldn't go last year, it was all you know chronophobia stuff. But this year we'll do it again. And it was just it just how it is because once you're open to happiness, open to love, open to receive, open to others to give and open to have relationships, things gonna change. It's gonna change and Kanai Hara it was really, really quite, um, um, it's a big deal to grow that way. And still be different, still your own stuff, but it's okay. So what I hear you saying is um, you are living the dream, Dr. Ben. Like yeah. you have a wonderful family. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, you've been a devoted family man for, for 40 years now and raised all those children and welcomed those uh, sons and daughters-in-law and those grandchildren and um, you're being able to take a victory lap and having just such delight in it and I just want to congratulate you, you. on that that's fantastic it's uh, something we all dream of and here you have accomplished that so yeah. I admire that very much well, I'd like to um, ask you some anonymous questions, if you're willing. These are from our students, and I told them that I was going to be talking to our man panel, and I would ask these questions for that on their behalf. And so, if you're willing, um, I wanted to. The first one I wanted to ask, I have three of them for you, and the first one is, how do you solve differences such as she wants to move and you don't? Wants to move what to another house or another community? Yeah. Another community, let's say, out of state or another country. Oh, or, yeah. There is a few circumstances where I will tell the guys, listen to your wife. Because the home is hers. We may pay for it, may work for it, but it's this woman's home. Um, in Jewish law and in, in mysticism and so forth, we talk about the value of the, of the woman and the home, called the, the, called the charis, uh, foundation of the home. And you, it, she knows, she knows where you belong. Which brings, by the way, and something which I, I have to take issue with one thing, Laura. I want to take oh. issue with one thing. Oh, oh, good. Okay. And that is, in, in according to Kabbalah, uh, the source of Jewish mysticism, mysticism it says that Woman has called a being there an additional level of understanding that men do not have. And they have to put input. It's not like, what do you think? It's like a healthy man in a healthy marriage will respect and depend upon his wife's understanding of things that he can't see. 
So there are times when I really said, Althurka, stop that stuff. What do you want to say? <laughs> I need your understanding. Because you understand things. You don't realize you have it. You don't realize the sense that us guys don't have. And you can't understand because you don't, you don't realize what it means not to have it. But you have something that I don't, that I don't have. Yeah. And I need to hear what you better tell me. Your insight. I need your guidance and your insight in this particular matter because I don't know enough beyond my, my own little box. And you have a box that goes beyond mine. Comes like a place to live, follow your wife's it, and go there. Go there. Listen to your wife. So interesting. So so the way that um, the way that I my understanding of this uh, dynamic that you're describing, I love your answer, by the way. As I hear a lot of humility in that answer and um, kind of that desire for her to be happy bubbling up in that answer. And and that's uh, that's how I've come to understand this dynamic that I think you're describing, which is my husband needs to know my desire. If I don't tell him my desire, then he's driving around without a map. We have no North Star to navigate. Oh, that. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how are you expecting me to know what you want if you don't tell me? <laughs> what, do tell, what, do, what do you want already? And oh, every man, every man. Every man does this. We all go the same thing. What does she think? I don't, she won't tell me. I have no idea. I'm trying to do it wrong. I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, that's what it validates that perspective. (laughs) Say what you want for crying out loud. Say what you want. All right. So, so when you're describing this, um, that women have this understanding, and I call it desire, is that, is that the same or are we talking about two different things? Two different things. Two different things. Okay. Um, so tell me tell me a little more about the understanding piece. I'm now. about to go into an enterprise. I think it's a great idea. Uva says, uh, no, it's not a good idea for you. And I may think it's great. But her mind, she says, well, she sees something I don't see. Um, or she just, they just know, just something, understanding of things, guys. We don't, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so... You have to be willing to share that. Now, I don't know how, to, how that jibes with, with the idea of not stepping on toes and controlling men, but it has some way, some, some allowance for, for insight and sharing. Yes, yes. Well, certainly insight and sharing is important. I just know for me that it was entirely out of balance, that my, you know, I felt that I was so much smarter than my husband. So of course I had to tell him everything about, you know, <laughs> okay, everything. Okay, there's a limit now, there's a limit. <laughs> right, right. So, so maybe, uh, you know, I've heard that you have to uh, fold a paper. Once you fold a piece of paper, you have to fold it the opposite way to get it to lay flat. Right. So for me, it was really valuable to just trust my husband's thinking and, and let him come to his own conclusions you know, sometimes he was just talking. Sometimes he's talking about an enterprise that he's considering. And he, you know, if I just am a good listener and a safe space, he can talk himself all the way from I'm gonna do it to no, you know, never mind, that's a terrible idea. Or, right. or the other way. Right. right. And right. just right. just by my listening and being a um a respectful presence, that that can also be uh Maybe a form of understanding. In a way. That is very, very important. Very, very powerful. A good listener does everything. A lot of times, just your listening opens up channels for understanding without even saying a word. Ah, okay. This this is the intersection of our uh, convictions. Then I would say, Doctor Ben, is because sometimes just that listening was more powerful than anything I could have spoken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I love that. So, but when it comes to moving home, um, home is the wife's domain, and so you would be trying to move heaven and earth to get her where she says the family should move. It sounds like. Right. Wow, I love that. Okay, and, and what is the, the? Someone asked, "What is the kindest, most inspiring thing you've been told by your wife?" Wow. Probably the kindest thing she said to me may sound strange to you, but um, sincerely apologizing for being defensive. Mm. And for all those times when she wouldn't let me be, be right, be functioning, anything. 
because she was so defensive, didn't know how to preach what was going on. She had no sense for herself. I think it's probably the most remarkable thing I can think of right now that really was a game changer. I'm no longer walking in eggshells. Hmm. And I think what I hear you saying, the subtext of that was um, you were never bad. You were never mean. You're, uh, like, I see that your intentions were good. Is that? Is that yeah, I was trying. I, I don't know. I mean, I may have some cynical make a comments, but I was never trying to be hurt. God forbid, never trying to be hurt. Right. Right. It's the last thing you want to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a that's a fantastic example. It's a beautiful example of something that I was inspiring. That your wife said, "Thank you so much. Great answer." And what this is a third question. Um, what makes you feel disrespected? Um, several things. We're talking, and she walk away from me, and talk another facing another direction on the middle of the conversation. Um, I think also in this respect, it would be, um, I think, being criticized unnecessarily. And I couldn't do it right. Not this, not this, not this, not this, not this. Just, just, it, was, it was impossible. But sometimes it might suggest this and that, maybe, but she would, well, I wouldn't say, don't you think, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, I do think. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Don't you think it's a good idea if you did? I mean, you were thinking a good idea if I did. It just the, 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 this kind of communication where it was, was infuriating, very, very condescending. Um, what else is disrespectful? Um, if I'm going to have a chat and talk with her, and she wants to read a book, she's busy reading a book or reading her phone or reading something, mm-hmm. and that takes, that, takes, that takes priority over me. That was, that was pretty painful. Those are fantastic examples because I think you kind of alluded to earlier that the female brain uh, looks at respect so differently. We, it's really something I find um, difficult to, I want to say comprehend. That's not quite right. I feel like I do have an understanding, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, I've even been in the situation where I'm trying to write a, a blog or a podcast about disrespect. And I'm thinking, gosh, that is so interesting that they consider that disrespect. Like I'll still be kind of amazed by it. Right. <laughs> so it's almost like it just doesn't stick <laughs> in my brain. Like, wait a minute, that's disrespectful. So these are just great examples, great reminders. Like when you're speaking and she's turning in the other direction, she's just uh, not giving you attention. Um, when you're wanting to say to say something, or or yeah, she's. Uh, I mean, I think for sure we all feel uh, disrespected with um, somebody reading their phone or a book or something when we're talking. But um, but I love the, also the the words. Don't you think? And you're like right away. You're like yes, I do. <laughs> but maybe don't don't uh, tell me what I think. Uh, is kind of what I hear you saying. Is that right? Don't tell me what I yeah, think. Just say, just say what you want. What are you going to say? You want what say you, what you, you want. want. Don't say you think belongs over want. there? No, I think over there. Well, don't you think belongs over there? No. Just say, I like to see it over there. Don't just be clear. Be clear. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, okay. For you, be, clear be, is tell me what you want. Is right, that right? Be, right. Tell me your desires. Right. Yeah. Well, those are fantastic examples of um, just the male perspective on disrespect. Like, there's just no way for me to replicate that as a female. I feel like you have special insider knowledge about that that I really value. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope the kind so. of guy, kind of guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, all right. So, anything else that you? I mean, because you are so invested in this with me, which I love. Um, on my mission to end world divorce, and you done so beautifully with your own family. Is there anything else you want um, our, the listeners of this podcast to know? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, wives have no, you have no idea how important your role is your husband feeling like a man. If, it's, if you do how powerful your influence is on him, we're, we're, we're a team. And we're fragile. We're, we're fighting, and, and, and even guys who are winning the fight are still doing a lot of stuff. And your support, your understanding, your ability to listen, all that kind of these skills is everything. Changes everything. Changes everything for a guy. 
It's so powerful. It's such a powerful role. It doesn't go wasted. It doesn't, it, it doesn't go. It doesn't go unheard. Guess it doesn't get unnoticed. You may not acknowledge it, but you watch. Changes are going to happen. I'm going to encourage a man to be a man. It's okay to be a guy. It's okay to be a man. Do some guy things. Go whatever. Join your guys. Do some guy things. Do some cultural own guy things. Well, I love that. Dr. Ben, this has been wonderful. I'm so grateful, so happy that you have um, shared some things that are so personal, uh, but so valuable for us uh, to be able to hear um, from, from your own mouth. So thank you so much. I don't know how I can ever thank you for this contribution to uh, the podcast and the greater mission of Ending World Divorce. Well, I appreciate it very much. And uh... I look forward to further conversation. Maybe we'll share some ideas together and uh, further the program. I would, I would welcome that. Thank you, Dr. Ben. You're welcome. My pleasure. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll interview the husband of a relationship coach who says it was because of his wife that he lost 80 pounds and is now sober for 18 months. He shares what his wife did that changed everything for their family. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that my friends made me start working out with them on Zoom last year, but now they think I'm making them work out with me. Who's driving this hot dog truck anyway? (laughs) 